Let's examine the following example that deals with mass spectrometers. Let's suppose we have a sample of only two types of atoms. One of those atoms is a carbon-12 atom, and the other atom is some other unknown atom. So, we essentially want to determine what the other atom is, and we're going to do it by using a mass spectrometer. So, if we ionize the sample and allow our two atoms to travel through the same mass spectrometer with the same magnetic field B1, B2, and the same electric field E, we find that the radius of the semicircular pathway of the carbon atom is 22 centimeters, while the radius of the unknown atom is 29.3 centimeters. So, using that information, we want to calculate what the mass of our unknown atom is, and then use the periodic table to determine what atom that is. So, we're going to solve this problem in three steps. In step one, we're going to find the equation for the mass of the carbon atom. In step two, we're going to find the equation for the mass of the unknown atom. In step three, we're going to take the ratio of these two equations and use that ratio and the atomic mass of our carbon-12 atom to calculate what the mass of our unknown atom is. And then we're going to use the periodic table to determine what our unknown atom is. So let's begin with step one. So, let's examine what happens to our carbon atom as it travels in the following region with the magnetic field B1 and an electric field E. Now, from our discussion on the mass spectrometer, we know that the magnitude of magnetic force in this region acting on the carbon atom is equal to the magnitude of the electric force as a result of the electric field acting on the carbon atom in this same region. So, the magnetic force is given by the charge on the carbon Q multiplied by the velocity of that atom V multiplied by the magnetic field 1 in this region B1. And that is equal to the electric force Q multiplied by the electric field. So, we can solve for our velocity and we see that the velocity of our carbon atom is the ratio E to B1. Now, Let's continue. Let's suppose now our carbon atom is traveling through this semicircular region where there is no electric field, but there is a magnetic field given by B2. So let's use Newton's second law of motion to determine what the mass equation is. So the net sum of our forces acting on the carbon atom in this region is equal to the mass of the carbon atom, mc, multiplied by its acceleration. Now, the acceleration is centripetal, so that means a is equal to v squared divided by rc, where rc is the radius of the carbon atom, v is our velocity, calculated in this step. Now, this left side becomes Q times V multiplied by B2 magnetic field in this region. So, we can replace our velocity with this ratio E to B1 and solve for the mass of the carbon atom. And we see the mass of the carbon atom is equal to the following result. Now, in step 2, we can essentially follow the same exact step and we see that the mass of the unknown atom is equal to Q, B1 times B2 times R, uh, the radius of our unknown atom, divided by the electric field. Notice the quantity of charge found on those two atoms is exactly the same, and also the velocity is also the same, because the velocity is the ratio of the electric field, the constant, and the magnetic field in this region also a constant. So, we have the following two equations that will give us the mass of our two atoms. So, now, in step three, we find the ratio of this equation to this equation. So, the mass of our unknown to the mass of our carbon is equal to this equation divided by this equation. So, notice the Q's, the B1's, B2's, and E's will all cancel, and we see 
that the ratio of our unknown mass to our carbon mass is equal to the radius of our unknown to the radius of our carbon. So that's 29.3 centimeters divided by 22 centimeters and we get about 1.3. So now we use the mass of our carbon atom, which is 12 atomic mass units, we multiply by the ratio of 1.3, and that gives us the mass of our unknown atom, and that's about 16 atomic mass units. So if we use the periodic table, we see that oxygen has this quantity of mass, and that means the second atom must be an oxygen atom.